A very warm welcome to today's edition of our learning tutorial at JK of JK Clothing. Today we're going to learn how to draft, cut and sew this beautiful off-shoulder dress you see here. This is an off-shoulder that has been cut together with a pattern. Very, very beautiful. Aside this, we're also going to learn how to fix our zipper. Usually when a zipper is fixed, you see some crookedness at the back. We don't want to experience that. And so we're going to learn how we're able to fix this beautiful zipper without that bulges at the back as you see here. If there's something you'd want to learn, please do stick and stay. Let's do this together. This is our basic bodice and this is what we are going to base on to get our off shoulder sewn. In case you are new to our channel and you'd want to know how we drafted the basic bodice. We have a video of it, which we'll put in the description box below. Let's go ahead and then see how we're able to use this to sew our beautiful off shoulder without cutting an off shoulder band. We are first starting with a modification of the front pattern. Let's assume that you'd want the whole dress to sit about six inches above your shoulder to nipple line. And so six inches upwards that is how high you want the whole off shoulder length to be and so you'd mark six inches from this point upwards and so with this you'd also determine how high or low you'd want the shoulder area to be it also depends on you sometimes you'd want the off shoulder to be a bit to the top or you'd want it to be very down, very close to your um, armpit. We just want to go downwards from the shoulder point by 2 inches. Bear in mind, this 2 inches is by choice. It depends on how high or low you'd want the shoulder area to be as well. You'd come and measure 4 and half inches from this armhole line towards this part. This is giving you the width of your upper arm. It's not always the case, but then four and a half inches is almost always correct, especially for a normal sized body. So we are measuring four and a half inches from where the armhole line is towards this part. And so what you do is that you divide this arm by two. Let's say it's very imaginary. So we're using this point and they were measuring from this point all the way to where the armhole would have to be. And so when I, when I start from this point all the way to that point, I get four and half inches and so this is the four and a half that we are measuring from this point all the way here we have to draw a line here so that this very line we have which was the six inches we had here would come all the way to this point and to the four and a half okay, let's bear this in mind that this four and a half is for this part. As this one comes up, it's going to close the shoulder just as our hand is shaped. And so let's say our arm is shaped this way. This is how our arm comes to set into our body. With this, we would extend this line till it touches the arm here. We are going to determine the width of the off shoulder band. And so we want to have a total of, let's say, two inches. If we want two inches, it means we should be doing three inches or two and a half, depending on your seam allowance. Since we want two inches, my seam allowance is quarter of an inch. And so I'll only add half of an inch to it. Two, in, two and a half inches downwards, I'll join this 
Iya. Yeah. I want this line to be parallel to that line. You open this that by about half of an inch and then half of an inch on both sides. So this is to make sure that when the person wears the dress, the top part would not be very loose. That is the top part of the dress. We will now join the two darts we extended here to where the shoulder dart ended. We'll fold this dart onto that. And so you can see from this that once we fold this very dart on, that is as we have widened the dart. This line, which was moving up straight, now truncates at this point. And so we have to join that line back to this point. So this would become our new line that we are going to cut. And so this is our front. We'll go back and then modify the back pattern as well. With the back, we'll do the same thing as we did for the front by moving four and a half inches from this very point towards the side. Now, we will refine our shoulder. That is as if we are drawing our hand. That is the upper part of our arm. So with this, we would also take two inches as we did for the front. When it comes to the back, you can decide to go down as much as you want. All that we need is that your sleeve, that is the standard sleeve, you have for the front, you should have the same thing for the back as well. And so we want to be able to join this two. We want to be able to join this two like this. This is what we want to have. And so we have our two inches. This can go as low as you wish. That is the center back. So let's say we are making the center back go down by four inches. That is for the neck depth. Now with this, we are going to join that point to this point. It can be in any shape. And so let's compare with the front and see. Okay, this is okay. We are moving downwards by two and a half as we are done for the front. And we'll join as well. We can also go ahead and cut that of the back. For the back, since there was no deepening of the dart here. You may want to go inward by just about a quarter of an inch. That is to create a little space at the back where the sleeve is going to join the body. And then we will draw our ample again. Okay, so we are going ahead to use this patterns to cut our fabric. Bear in mind that for this model, our nib to waist was supposed to end here. That is where I've marked with a red line. And so I'd have to cut this off and that. This shouldn't really confuse us. When you go to how we drafted our basic bodies, enough explanation was done on that very portion of the draft. That is this portion. There are some dresses that you may want to leave this here. That is the back length here. 
and not to necessarily use the nape to waist. That is especially for loose dresses and stuff like that. But for this very one, we are going to use the nape to waist very well because we are going to zip the back and we don't want to have any puckering at the center back after we have fixed our zip. We are going to take off the shoulder dart and the waist dart so that we have two panels to deal with. For that reason, I'm joining where the shoulder dart ended and where the shoulder to nipple point also is. For the back two, we want to have two panels as well. And so we'll first cut this portion off and then we'll draw a line to touch any part of the top here. To avoid being confused, it would be better if we could label them. After we are done cutting the fabrics, let's see how we added our seam allowances. With this and that part, that is the center back and then the side of the back, we added the seam allowance to the parts that we'll be joining. Bear in mind, we had already added a one inch seam allowance to the basic bodies. For that reason, there was no allowance added to the side seams. If you remember quite well, we did not also add any allowance to the four and a half extension we had done for the sleeve. And so we have added that during the cutting of the fabric. It was the same thing when it came here. The center front and then the side of the front. This is on fold and at this point we've added our seam allowances, quarter seam allowance to this very side. And for the sleeve extension that we did, we have also added our quarter inch seam allowance. When it came to the center back, I did not add any zipper allowance, but then I have cut it exactly the same as we had done in the pattern. What you are going to do is that I'm going to fix an open-ended open zipper at the back. And so whatever we are going to sew off, it will be catered for by the teeth of the zipper. And that's how come I didn't add any zip allowance. If I wanted to fix a concealed zip or a secret zip or something like that, I would have added um, some zipper allowance to it. And so this is basically it. We're going to sew. I have cut the lining that is two pieces each of the lining and then two pieces each of the self for all of these apart from the center front which we have two exact pieces because we are going to open them up for this tutorial purpose i did not i did not stiffen these with any violin or warden or whatever the main motive is to demonstrate how we're going to extend the off shoulder without necessarily putting on a band please don't forget to subscribe to this channel in case you have not this is a channel that gives you very educative content once it has to do with fashion we are there please don't forget to also share with us your comment thank you very much recommend this speak to others so that they also benefit from this learning tutorials we are sharing with you so as we are going to join the various pieces together and then stitch, this is what we are doing. Let's deal with the front first. We would sew the lining and the self separately. And so all we do is to open it up like this. We are opening the, the self to up like this. And so this is going to the side. We are going to pin it from the bottom to the top. Just as we have done for the lining, we are repeating same for the self. And then we'll go ahead and do same for the back as well. We are going to stitch the front as we had pinned it. This is the lining. And after that, we'll deal with the self as well. And so with this, fully sewn like this, as you see it, would we'll go ahead and repeat same for the self.
after we are done with this we are giving it some top stitches this is just decorative now the back we are also doing the same as we did for the front we are just stitching the two pieces together that is the center back and the side back as we have seen it sb and then cb we are stitching them together for each of them i would top stitch and as i said this is just decorative apart from it being decorative it also reinforces your seams that is it makes it very difficult to tear apart once we are done stitching them we will now come back to give it a very hot press this is called a ham or a seam roll it's used for ironing caps you know part of the body that has contours you use this to iron it perfectly well and this is also called clapper this is a wooden piece and since it doesn't conduct heat you know once the heat is applied to the fabric and then you press this on it makes the fabric lie very flat making your ironing very very superb we are going to put the various pieces together so this is the back one side of the back and this is the self and this is another side of the back and so with these two we are going to place their counterpart linings on them we we'll would go and stitch the top here so after we've gone to stitch the two together, that is the neckline, I have as well top stitched it towards the lining so that when we fold this here, the lining doesn't pop up at the good side. So we'll give it a hot press at the neckline. So the next thing to do after we are finished with the necklines is to turn it good size together like this. Now we are going ahead to sew this sleeve part and then the armhole. We will do same for this part and we will repeat same also for the back patterns where we are going to put the two good sides together like this and then we'll stitch here so after stitching them the next thing to do would be to hold along the stitching lines towards the wrong side that is towards the lining and so we're going to iron this and that line right along the stitch lines this is to ensure that when we turn it to the good side we wouldn't have the lining popping out to where the good side is So we flip it to the good side. So this is what we get. We are repeating this process for the front and the other side of the back. So we are done ironing them. This is what we do. We are turning one of these inside out. You can do this or you can do that.
So after turning this to the wrong side, I'll then insert this leaf into the other one. The, the two sleeves have met here. Okay, so this is how we're going to sew the sleeve. That is the two pieces together. Instead of sewing this whole thing on top here, you can open the two like this and then sew inside. We have sewn all around like this. After we are done with this, we are going to take this one and turn it inside out like this. Yes. And so this is what we're going to have. So we'll now go and then give it a hot press. And then we'll do the same for the other part of the sleeve. We are going to run overlock stitches on the unfinished edges. After running the overlock stitches, we are going to sew off our seam allowance as we had added to the basic bodice that we had drafted earlier. And so on this one, the seam allowance we had added was one inch. And so we are taking the one inch off. But then bear in mind, for the waist, we'd want to snatch it a little bigger. And so instead of the one inch, we are doing one and a quarter. And then we are taking one inch from the bust area. We join this in a straight line. We repeat same for the other side. We'd go ahead and stitch this and come back to learn how to fix our zipper. Okay, so after stitching our seam allowances from the dress, we're going to see how to fix our zipper. What we said earlier is that we want to fix the zipper without having any bulging at the back. So this is how we go about it. You first measure the distance to which you are going to sew the zipper. When I measure this, I get eight and a quarter. Because we got eight and a quarter from this very part, we are going to mark eight and quarter minus half of an inch. We start from any part of the zipper. That is from where the head is. And then we are marking eight and quarter minus half, which will give us seven and three quarters. This is seven and three quarters. We mark it on both sides of the zipper. We'll place the beginning at the top part of the dress. And then we'll place where the seven and three quarter ended. We'll place it at the edge of the dress, as we see here. So you can see from here, that the zipper is shorter than the space to which we are going to fix the zipper. We will distribute the excess evenly along the zipper. And so you can see a little bit of uh, puckering around this area. Okay, so we are taking this to the table to stitch. We would first secure the edge, that is the last part of the zipper, before we come and start from the beginning all the way to the edge. Because we are just securing it, we are just sewing very close to the teeth. 
we are just sewing this to attach the zipper to the dress. I just want to take off the pins. And when I do this, it affords me the opportunity to pull the zipper itself so that the free dog is able to distribute the excess that we have here evenly for me. And so all we do is just to pull the zipper. So as you can see, it's been distributed all along. You see this puckering on the dress itself. It will not have any effect after we are done sewing. We we'll repeat what we just did for the other side of the dress. After the first stitching, it's important to turn it to the good side and check if, if the length matches and that of the beginning also matches very well. In our instance, it does. And so we'll go ahead and then stitch very close to the teeth. If you have a zipper foot, you can use it so that you're able to soak very close to the teeth. If you don't, you'd use the method that helps you to be able to sew very close to the teeth. So this is our zipper foot. We are done with our off shoulder dress. Let's close the zipper and see. Yeah, so this is what we get. We are going to finish the edge, and this is how we do it. We we'll just flip this backwards to the wrong side and first stitch this on after that we'll flip it back inward and then we'll top stitch at the good side wow this is the end result of our beautiful off-shoulder top. It is very, very easy and beginner-friendly. Please, if you found this tutorial to be helpful, don't forget to subscribe now. I warmly welcome your comments, your suggestions, and criticisms. I can't just wait to have you on our next sewing project. Please recommend this page to your other colleagues and friends. Share with them and let them also be a beneficiary of this awesome platform. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you next time.